<laughs> it took me a minute to figure out who the lead singer was for the Crusaders, like the actual, like the original recording. There were a lot of groups like that back then. I don't know what it's called, but it's just like, it would be like a band or somebody, and then they just alternate the lead. Okay. That was, a, that was a, the thing of the day, 60s and 70s. Everybody had a band named after a random noun, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we all have a star. Just from that opening phrase alone, what is the first thing that stands out to you? The first thing, well, when it comes to this particular artist, her instrument alone, it sounds like Shaka Khan. She was one of those, those girls that sounded, had that Shaka sound. And Shaka, like Vesta in many ways, their voice is kind of controversial. Because like Shaka, Vesta had an insane range. And for a woman to have such a vast range, especially in this particular example, so low is like, wow. How, how low can you actually go? You know what I mean? <laughs> Between the range, the sound, and how beautiful, she's singing very legato. Singing very much so, so the line is it doesn't poke out. Yeah, and the this the vowel the vowels just yes. So that's that's the one thing that that popped out to me, how low it is and how beautiful the the line is. So that first line is F, I think F A flat, E flat, E flat, and then she's yeah. So it's so she's staying between a, like around. F and A flat for basically an entire line. Um, I know a lot of people, I've spoken to, you know, a lot of different singers. A lot of people talk about how difficult it is to sustain sinking high. But I've also heard many say that it's also difficult to sustain low singing. Um, could you talk about why that could be? When you're singing really low or you're singing really high, it's really hard, hard to kind of focus the sound. For example, the Karen Clark to me, very close vowel, and she holds it for 75 years. But if she was to hold that an octave up, that's hard to sustain and keep that while having, because you have, with, with a higher pitch, it has to be an open sound. Or you're closed, you're closed the voice, that's not good, on, a, on any extreme pitch. For this example, Number one, I think Vesta was also, the way her instrument was set up, she had a very peculiar lower, lower um, extension. So she had more accessibility to sing lower and sustain it for a longer period of, period of time. So, I mean, this example is not as, this particular example is not, I don't think difficult, it wouldn't be difficult for her to sing per se, in terms of how long, how low of a pitch it is and how quick of a note it is, we all have, you know? But <laughs> moving on, when we go to the measure 10, where mother's singing the E flat, that. Now, holding that pitch for that long, for a half note, when we, when we get there, I know I'm jumping the gun a little bit. That would become, that's a little bit more difficult. But generally, singing extremely high or singing extremely low, because you want to have an open sound. And what I mean by open sound is you have to modify. For example, if you're singing a national anthem, for the land. You don't want to sing. 
it's not, you know, it's, it's hard to sustain that. You have to open the vowel. When she was singing the first line, we all have, I think that's a vo vocal modif modification because it's so low. She wasn't, there was, there was, if in classical music, it's called chiaro scuro. So lightness and a darkness to the sound. Whereas she's singing the vowel E, so the tongue is up, but the back of the tongue, you have to create two vowels. The back of the tongue is not high. We, that's not happening. The back of the tongue is relaxed. We all have, you know? So I think that's also a contributor to that. And making sure it's a nice, meaty, dark sound without forcing it. What our lives can be One good night On high You see A diamond in the sky A star So strong Something I think is interesting about that is one of the first things, like she makes it through the freeze, the entire, you know, first part that sits really low. But one thing I realized is that like, in many of the phrases, she, the sound would start like, I guess you could say like the chords are closed, like it's very, uh, but then like, again, like towards the end of the phrase or generally in the middle, it will start to air out. And I was, and uh, I was sit, noticing it, what it reminded me of is what I've heard of like people when they sing really, really high or like they have to sustain it. It might start with vibrato, but then it will like end up turning into a uh, straight toe in a woman's voice. How low are like those Fs? E's and E flats and D's uh, for you all to sing and to like stay on those pitches. Very low. And if you notice, watch how she's eating the microphone when she gets to that low E flat. One good night, good night. She's eating that mic. And that's also a, 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 another, going back to that, that airy type of vibe. One, it could be stylistic. Two, I, I, I believe it's stylistic, in my opinion, because a lot of a lot of those girls did that back in the day. A lot of the a lot of the mothers and the queens and aunties did that. Um, but the on high, you hear it for me, because it's an open vowel. High, um, but that's low. And I'm a soprano. <laughs> However, like I was, I was listening to this and I'm thinking, wow, this is extremely low. Most people would not sing this low, especially singers, women in particular. Um, but it also depends on, 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 it's very subjective. Soprano, I, was, I don't think, I, I don't believe Vesta was a soprano. I think she was a mezzo. So the passaggio is different. That's why I think the D flats were just like on it. Um, We'll sing in, in G or, uh, not G, we'll sing in E flat. Or we'll sing in F, and, but, not, but not E flat, that's, that's way too high. And what I mean by, by that, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's hard for me to describe. It's not, yes, it's the key we're in is an A flat, but if we put it in F, we'll sing up the octave. It makes, I've heard of like, um, I don't know, there's, there's one contralto from like the forties. I think her name is Kathleen Ferrier. She mm -hmm. used to, I don't remember she, if she used to raise the key so she could sing it down the octave. I think that's what she used to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's what, so yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yes. So, because this is, this is incredibly low. 
I mean, the, the original recording of this is in this exact key. The original recording is also by a man. So something I think is interesting is when you look at all the voice type charts, really from bass to color or tour soprano, there is about, there's a great chunk of notes that we all share. Um, could you talk about, okay, so I'll just play the, uh, the uh, male version, the original version, and he's singing the same notes. And then in comparison to Vesta, just explain why there is that difference in quality, despite them singing the exact same pitches. This is a good conversation to me. I love this so much. <laughs> we all have a star shining clear and clean. It shows who we are, what our lives can be. sing the same notes why did that sound like that <laughs> and why did <laughs> she sound how she sounded the simple reason is one in the biological body of a soprano or a mezzo this sits very low that's so it's gonna sound a little bit, a little bit more. Hold on, let me find these words. Let me let me find the words. Let me go back to to on high. So that E flat in the male voice, you realize that the vibrato and the sound is more focused. He can hold that forever. Now in Vesta's, it's more open because it's lower, it's, it's, it's in a lower extremity of her voice. And that's based off of the instrument. I'm interested to see what he doesn't do it in the, in, the, in the original recording. I'm interested to see what he would sound like if he attempted to do the D flats and the embellishment that Vesta did. There will be a completely different sound. And the accessibility, even the way he sang it. If, he, if we were to be able to watch him Perform this, perform this tune and see how his body is physically, it'll be completely different. He wouldn't be eating the microphone like Vesta would. You know what I mean? Play it one more time for me. We all have a star Shining clear and clean It shows you sound because it's in the perfect it's like his, in his middle not in his middle voice but like in the smack dab in the middle of his range that's going to be a whole different sound he could sing that with a literal <laughs> if i try to sing that actually wouldn't be terrible but he could sing that easily because it's, it's smack dab in the middle of the range it's going to be two different sounds a great example of that in instrumental music i would say is there's a piece called The Rite of Spring. And the first notes that are played, uh, it's really high. And when you first listen to it, it sounds like a French horn, but it's a bassoon. Bassoons don't play high. Bassoons are, they, they typically are, are lower sounding instruments. Um, so it's a different, and Stravinsky wrote that because he was trying to achieve a sound that he couldn't find in other instruments. He wanted that quality. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's completely objective, whatever sound you want. It's like me trying to sing Lou Rawls. You know what I mean? I don't know what that would sound like. I wouldn't attempt to do that. And even, even quarterly, he's really singing on the chords. Mm -hmm. And you're, if you're singing that, and if you know anything about the vocal folds, 
it's kind of as if the higher you sing, the more they, the faster they go and the more they stretch out. And that's the same thing with this particular example. If you're singing low, <laughs> you're not stretching out those chords out that much. You know what I mean? Because you're not singing high. You're, you're using a whole different part of your voice. Um, and that's not the case with his because that's perfectly in his range. Yes. I mean, it, it, it's, it really goes... It's That's almost like a countertenor singing a metal aria. It's going to be a different sound. It's going to sound similar in a lot of ways, but it's a different sound because they're singing the same pitches. Got it. And uh, something that I noticed, like with women, uh, no matter if she's a soprano, mezzo, contralto, something that I noticed is once they all get to a certain point, I would say on average in most women, I've noticed once they get around E, yes, E below middle C, it's general. That's the general area. And they might have notes below that. Some can go a lot further down below that. But once they get below that range, it's generally a lot of air in the sound. Is that just because of the biological makeup of of uh, a woman? I would say, if I try this, let me see. Because you, you, we're, you, you kind of, I would say for, for me, singing that low, you don't, you don't really close the, you don't really close of the way so it's going to be airy i'm trying to even think if i was to sing technically like a high this e this this e e in chess e if i try to sing that an octave lower like the same onset e <laughs> i think i think it's it's way too far out of the range and trying to sing it in chest is this, it is, it's, it's not in my range. Okay. That's so, so I mean, some people have the note, but it's not like, it's not the same. Okay. It won't be the same. I mean, that's why you have different gears. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the chest voice, you have your mixed voice, you have also, it depends on the passaggio. With the switches, with the break, with the switches in the voice. But even singing a high E, you know, it's a whole, a whole different, a whole different ball game. I'm not singing the same way I'm singing. You know, it's that's not. I mean, I could. It just wouldn't be the same. That makes a lot of sense because it's just like when you just try that E, that with that. Uh, on set, it sounded pretty similar to how she actually started the song. That F like, <laughs> yeah, because it's just like, oh, which, which actually is a good point to the what I want to talk about next. And I actually learned this from uh, a, one of my favorite mezzos, uh, Carolyn Sabron. She said, a lot of people like to focus on the note. So whether that's the very high note or the very low note. And she said, but it's actually the notes that come before it that are most important and the right. notes that come after. Amen. So, like, uh, I'm going to play a clip of Vesta singing something that's actually written for her voice, singing the exact same pitches. And I just uh, want you to just uh, talk about, I guess, the difference in sonority that we heard with We All Have a Star. I need to get that notated, but I believe she does F's, some F's, and A flats. I think It's our mixed moments with your soul, right?
is that? You better say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can sing anything down the octave. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, see, that's going back to the legato line. And I, the way I was taught, if you approach everything from the highest pitch, ah, it doesn't sound like you're going, you're, you're jumping up to the pitch. I think that's a problem I think a lot of people think of. They think, oh, high note, I have to, you know, uh, or they think note to note. And that, that could get you in, into serious trouble. You think note to note, you bring all that from the lowest pitch. Uh, you try to bring that. When a woman sings that low, the larynx is extremely relaxed. That larynx is just hanging out on the beach. You know what I mean? And as, as, we, as, as, as it goes up, there's a, there's a baby laryngeal tilt and all that stuff which is what our friend experienced because he was right in the middle and he was experiencing some parts where he, he had to modify when it got a little high for him. But she, she was chilling, so larynx was low. For her, I think she was, a, she was not only a musician, I think she truly knew her instrument in a sense of, like I said, when you are preparing for a specific pitch, you're preparing for the, for the, for the pitch, the high pitch, the entire phrase. Um, so that's one. Two, she's in the prime, she's in the, the middle of her, of her range. So, the larynx is going to be moving. Things are going to be moving around. It's going to be more present in her face, the sound. Um, which is not the, what happened, and we all have a star in the beginning of that when it was really, really low. Um, but when we all have a star in Measure 17, when she started to move around, we heard that thing that made the, her instrument. We really heard the instrument. Um, but I think that's really fascinating. But it's also to goes to show that Vesta, we all have a star. That's not her too. I believe she was a guest for that performance. Correct. And the Correct. fact that she was able to be like, they were like, you want to you want to sing on this tune? And she's like, I'm gonna sing on this tune. Mm -hmm. And she sang it in the original key that they did it in. You know, it's really just like, whoo. She had a sense, of she she had a keen sense of her of her instrument to be like, okay, I can sing this. Obviously, it's not going to sound like the original singer because this is not in my range, and it's going to sound different. Her larynx is going to be hanging out, but those pitches are going to come out. Which I think is interesting because, you know, she's basically singing the same notes as, and we all have a star, except there's no low E flat, which I think is important like when people are i guess talking about the extremities of the range what what i notice about this piece in particular is she you know it, she starts in the middle then jumps down to touch the f and come back up yes and does the same thing with the a flat so i guess it guess it speaks to like she has the notes uh, like she can sing them but she can't live on them like we heard with We All Have a Story. Exactly. That, her voice, her instrument, that's not, that's not Vesta Williams. So I guess my question would be is, I mean, granted the notes are still low in the voice, but because she's using that, I guess, energy from the middle voice to jump to the lower registers, would that be why she's able to sing them with more presence and volume? as opposed to the other, the we all have a star? I think, one, like we said, she has a, she has a beautifully low, low extension. So she's able to go, uh -huh, and, you know, it's me hanging out. But also because she didn't stay there. Two, I think it's also, she's in her element when she was on the Arsenio Hall show. 
She'd had a background singers. Everything is where it needed to be. She's also singing the song that she sings all the time. So that's also a, a, a part of that. But also, like you said, if you're living down there, it's a whole different ball game. <laughs> but she was vacationing for a very long time in, <laughs> in that lower range. But she just, you know, a quick little day trip. Uh -huh. And that's okay. And also, just like anything, just because a piano has 88 keys doesn't mean you need to play all 88. Just because you have the accessibility doesn't mean it's needed all the time. And I think that's the most, that separates a musician from a singer, I think. 